Hi there and welcome back. Let's dive deep into the lymphatic system. So in this video we will be looking at the structure of the lymphatic system. So it boils down to capillaries, the tiniest structure we can have it in the lymphatic system. Then you can say vessels are like pipes. These capillaries are combined and they pass through the lymphatic vessels. Uh, the lymph nodes are like kidneys, the filtering stations or the rest area or the gas station or the exit that we take uh, if we have to use the analogy of the traffic system. Um, the lymphatic ducts are the collecting ducts where ultimately it reaches over there to be connected back into the bloodstream. And the organs that we have in the lymphatic system would be the spleen, thymus, tonsils, adenoids. Uh, those are the. And as a matter of fact, these organs also act like lymph nodes. So they have their own unique functions to contribute in the process. But additionally speaking, they are also as good as, and they can also function as a so these are the medical terminologies, uh, the definitions, the lymphatic capillaries are the vessels which work with blood to collect the excess tissue fluid. Remember one of the forefront or the main function, the first function that we can think of about the lymphatic system is about the homeostasis, the balance of fluid recovery of the fluid. So it starts with the capillaries and through capillaries uh, using the lymphatic vessels they transport the lymph around the lymphatic system. Um, in the traffic system we have some express lanes for the public transportation like uh, some special bus they get a special express lane. Uh, we have a one way, we have a two way, we have a small street, we have a toll way, highway, things like that. Uh, just like that, so that there is no backflow and the lymph is moving in the same direction. God has created valves to keep the lymph moving in the direction towards the heart and prevent the backflow. The lymph nodes, um, we already reviewed this many times, but for those who are curious and are looking for medical jargons, afferent vessel, they transport the limb to the node and the efferent vessel transports the filtered limb back to the system. And I have already said multiple times that there are about 600 lymph nodes in our body. So what these lymph nodes do, simply speaking, they do like what kidney does in our body. They filter, they produce the new lymphocytes, antibodies to fight against and create the immune response, right? Uh, when we have a foreign invaders in our body, unwelcome guests, things like that. Um, and of course, they produce the new lymphocytes to add into the lymph, that purify the lymph, okay? And uh, they continue to form the antibodies that can last forever in our, for years or even lifetime. The lymphatic collecting ducts, so what happens from uh, capillaries to vessels, vessels to lymph nodes, uh, lymph nodes, are like a gas station or rest area but you continue to drive and then you ultimately reach the airport right so in the example that we have been using from the beginning so the collecting ducts are where these limbs are collected to ultimately go back into the mainstream or the bloodstream so let's talk about this lymphatic collecting ducts. So we have the right lymphatic duct. It's about 1.5 cm long and that is positioned at the root of the neck and empties into the right subclavian vein to rejoin the circulatory system. 
and what it does, it basically receives all the brain length from the right side of the head, chest and neck and from the right arm. And this one we are talking about right lymphatic duct. As far as the left lymphatic duct, also known as the thoracic duct, okay, it does cover the remaining portion that the right lymphatic duct doesn't cover. So the thoracic duct is about 40 centimeter long, extending from the second number vertebra to the root of the neck and empties into the subclavian vein to rejoin the circulatory system. What it does, collects and drains limb from the left side of the head, the neck, both lower limbs, the left side of the trunk and the left arm. So seeing is believing. So you can see here, um, the thoracic duct, uh, the thymus is right there in the center and there are uh, axillary, lymph nodes, spleen, uh, lymphatics of the upper limb. Uh, some locations are there where you will have a, a cluster of or the station or the gate station or the rest area, things like that. So you will see the inguinal uh, lymph nodes, right? Uh, the lymphatics of the lower limb and all that. So that that covers the major anatomy of the uh, lymphatic system. So this is another way, and this one is mainly focusing on the right lymphatic duct and the left or the thoracic duct. And you see the color, what they cover that has been highlighted through different colors that we just reviewed. And yet another view of the same thing where you have the cervical node, axillary nodes, inguinal nodes, your aorta is right there and the lymph lymphatic collecting vessels. But what is unique in this one? <clears throat> this one, they are referring to the drain by the right lymphatic duct and drain by the thoracic duct and that is color coded. So that provides the overview of these two collecting ducts. And as we have stated before, lymph is a, a lymphatic fluid. It's a collection of extra fluid that drains from the cells and tissues that is not reabsorbed into the capillaries plus other uh, substances. And the other substances are what? Is I have said before, proteins and minerals and fats and nutrients, damaged cells, cancer cells, foreign invaders like virus, bacteria, you name it. Okay. So try to digest these details. I will be back soon and we'll cover the another different aspect of the lymphatic and the immune system. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.